G'day, welcome to Jay Tackle TV. You might remember a couple of episodes ago we were talking about rigging our jigs and turns out that created a little bit of controversy. There was quite a lot of uh, discussion on why we were doing what we were doing and whether that was the most effective way or even the best way. So that episode we were really just talking about the rigging of the jigs. I think uh, it's a fair time now to start talking about why we're doing it and to explain some of the pointers and some of the techniques involved and why each individual hook setup will be the one to choose. We'll start off with the really uh, heavy end of jigging and there's probably the least controversy there. So something um, in the really big size like this 350 gram jig here, uh, modern day uh, rigging techniques would nearly always use a single hook. So this hook we have hanging off this jig is a 5.0 shout powerful assist. So very, very strong hook, really, really sharp hook. Um, pretty much bulletproof for most of the tackle classes that you're likely to use, certainly up to 80 or 100 pound braid. There's a couple of special things that we do here and slightly different to the way that it would be shown rigged on the packet. Firstly, we prefer to rig our jig with a solid ring, a split ring, and our hook. So we've actually got three components basically hanging off the front of the jig. There's a really sound reason for doing that. And that basically is we can change our hook out or our jig out without cutting our leader. So the other option that would be used regularly is to tie our leader directly to the small solid ring that's on the front of our assist hook. Now that provides a direct link from our leader to our hook and is a really, really good way to go. The only problem is if you want to change the hook, in other words, if you decide to use a slightly different size jig and you need a different size hook, you have to cut your leader, retie, and that's going to take time and potentially cost your fish. So ringing this way, where we have a solid ring and a split ring in our mix here, we can simply open the split ring, take our hook out, change our hook, open the split ring, take our jig off, change the jig. The only downside of a rig like this is that the split ring becomes a load carrying part of the rig. In other words, all the load that you're yanking through your rod and onto the fish that's hooked up to this hook is transferred through the split ring. So the split ring has to be up to speed. This is no place um, on a big amberjack or a big dog tooth tuner or a critter like that for any substandard uh, split ring. You pretty much want to go for a Japanese name brand, brand split ring, probably 250 pound, maybe 200 pound, but certainly in that sort of 250, 300 pound, you know you're going to have a bulletproof connection and no matter how you pull, you're never going to get a failure with those heavy rings. So consider rigging like that. It also provides really good articulation. So you don't, uh, you'll get the full movement of the jig on the split ring and it will catch you more fish in the long run. So that style of rig there would translate all the way through to much smaller jigs, even down to around 90 grams. So just a little uh, 100 gram jig like this. Naturally enough, the hook would be smaller, uh, but the rig that we would use essentially the same. We tend to use single hooks on all these because the hookup rate is very, very high. You've got a really large predator, or you're certainly aiming at a really large predator, and it's gonna try and eat the whole jig. You're gonna get a single hook in that fish. Uh, you're going to get a very sound hookup, and it'll have a couple of benefits, especially when you drop that fish on the floor of the boat. You're not going to have a spare hook flailing around or any of those sorts of things. So we tend to use a single hookup a lot, lot more on our our more mechanical jigs where we're chasing things like amberjack, things like dog tooth tuna, other critters that are going to try and eat the whole jig completely. Single hook seems to be a really good way to go and definitely um, our favourite way. One of the rigs that really caused a few uh, problems last episode was the slow fall jigs. So here we have a little evergreen Caprice Kid jig and we're rigging it in our preferred method which is two hooks, in other words a twin assist hook on either end. Now there's been some suggestion that that will cause a lot of snags and it really doesn't. You tend not to notice any increased snag, uh, uh, snagging ability with this jig. So we're presuming this jig, or in fact we're trying to get this jig to fall quite flat. So it's going to drop down like this. If you were to have a fast sink jig like 
this type of jig, which is going to drop vertically, and you're going to hang hooks off the bottom end here. That's going to drill the hooks into the bottom and definitely have a high instance of snagging. So these flat fall jigs, slow fall jigs tend not to do it. As the jig drops down, the water resistance on the hook is holding them up uh, like that. So they're actually not really in contact with the bottom. So we've been out and played with this rig quite a bit and uh, it tends to not give you any more snagging. Um, it, naturally enough, lots of hooks hanging over like that gives you great hookup ability. Um, if you look at the Japanese experts, pretty much every one of them is rigging this style of jig like this. And they're not doing it because uh, they like spending extra money on hooks or anything like that. They're doing it because it catches more fish. So definitely worth considering. If you're running one of these slow fall jigs, Storm Kawika, uh, a whole bunch of them that are, that are starting to become more and more popular, Shimano flat fall, then uh, two hooks at either end. The only consideration you need to think about here is that you're going to be tying your leader to the solid ring of one of these hook sets at the top of this jig. The load then, of course, through that top hook set is directly through the assist cord onto the hook, so there's no issues there. However, if you hook up on the bottom hook set, then you've got load transferred through two sets of split rings. So definitely something you need to consider. The quality of those two split rings on this style of jig has to be high enough to control the load that you might get if you're hooked up on these bottom hooks. So again, no place for really wimpy split rings. Go to our favourite and all-time uh, fishiest little jig, Ema Gun 40. And this one here is rigged with a, a Shout Twin Assist. It's called the Shout uh, Light Game Assist and the size is LL and it just suits these jigs down to a T. We tend to run this thing as it comes out of the packet. So out of the packet it has the two assists attached to a solid ring and then a really nice quality little split ring attached to it. The split ring here is not in the, um, not connected to the hooks if you like. So in other words, your lead is connected straight to the solid ring, your hook's connected straight to the solid ring. So the integrity of the split ring is not important. Naturally, you want it reasonable quality, but you're not actually loading the split ring at all, so you can have quite a fine split ring in this scenario. You might kind of think, well, why don't you want to change the hooks on this rig? And the reason why we don't have to is that this hook set's going to suit quite a number of different lures that we're going to use, and pretty much anything from that 30 gram, maybe all the way through to 60 grams, and at times even 80 to 100 gram jigs, um, we're using pretty much the same hook set. So that an interchangeability that you would get by having an extra split ring in the system, we just don't need to apply to these little jigs. When you're running these little jigs, then you'll find that the way we tend to run them all the time is a hook down either side of the lure. Uh, the reason why we're running twins assist with this is that there's every chance that you've not got a really big predator here. So there's not a predator that's gonna try and come up and eat this whole thing. It might be a smaller bottom fish, um, it might be a squire, it might be a tusky, it might be a grassy or something like that. And they can come up and have a peck at the jig. So a, another hook hanging up the side just improves your hookup rate. And as we said in that first episode, it also allows a bit of extra leeway. You can have both hooks in the fish and that distributes the load across two hooks. The strength of this hook is marginal at 20 pounds. Now I've used it a lot with 20 pounds and caught some impressively big fish, but you're right on the borderline there. So if you have a stiff rod uh, and 20 pound tackle and you're really going for it on a big fish, you definitely can straighten that hook. And two hooks in the fish is going to make that problem less of a problem, but still potentially there. If you're in a situation where those big fish are prevalent and you need extra strength, then we default to this hook pretty much straight away. So this is a, a Shout Powerful Jayco. This is a 1-0 hook. Um, the gauge of wire in this hook is much, much heavier than that uh, twin assist hook. We do automatically default to one hook now because this hook's so much bigger and so much heavier in wire that if you stick two of these on, it tends to look a bit weird and probably ends up putting the fish off. So we've got a flash tail and a fish tail on this thing here. No bad thing, uh, no real downsides other, other than potentially getting bitten off, bitten off by a mackerel and you know that's the way it goes at times. This time of year a lot of school mackerel around so it can cost you a few jigs if you're not lucky. This hook set comes with no ring at all attached so it's simply girth hitched over a nice little quality split ring and a quality, sorry, quality solid ring and then a split ring attaching to the lure. 
Again, you're not transferring any load through the split ring, all the loads from the solid ring directly through the assist cord to the hook. So the split ring doesn't have to be too strong, just has to be a reasonable quality to hang together. This hook here, well capable of handling the load you might uh, apply with 30 pound tackle and maybe at a pinch heavier from time to time. So all those really big fish, so metre plus golden trevally, the biggest end of your snappers, maybe things like jewies and, uh, and a few other big critters that you're likely to get eat one of these little jigs. You would kind of look at one of these hooks as being a must have. When we run down a bit smaller, there's so many more options to, to choose from. And we, in that past episode, we showed a couple of different hook sets. This little guy here is, uh, is a Verivas hook. So he's a little single hook um, on an assist cord with no solid ring. So we tend to loop two hooks onto a solid ring and then split ring that solid ring straight on to our jig. Again, we'd use that technique where we're putting a hook down either side. This little jig's a 20 gram jig. These little guys are number ones. They tend to suit this size jig really well. I've spoken to a lot of very experienced overseas guys about the fish skin and the flash, this stuff here, and mostly they're positive on it. And their take would be that that's gonna get you some extra fish at times when the jig's actually not the thing that's attracting them. The jig's actually taking these little bait rigs, if you like, down there. So it's kind of a, a situation that you would uh, look at when you're chasing bottom fish, especially to, uh, as much more important to have these things hanging off the end of your hook than if you're chasing more pelagic fish like trevally when it doesn't really seem to make that much difference at all. Again here, you're going to tie directly to your solid ring and a good quality but not too heavy split ring connecting a jig or your load directly through your solid ring to your hooks. This sort of hook here is probably good for about 15 pound tackle and no more. So you're going to find that you know on the sort of medium end of your micro jig outfits is about where you're going to push these to. Go right down to the really smaller end of things. This is a little gun 12 gram jig. And we've just got our favorite little hook on here, which is a shout uh, light game assist in the smaller size they make it in that size S. So you can see this is a really quite a fine little hook you're really hoping on a decent fish that you've got both these hooks in the fish because there's not a lot of hook here to, to give you the strength to hold a bigger you know, snapper or those sorts of things. Line class on a jig like this would be around that eight pound, certainly maybe 10 pound, but 15 pound really be pushing the limits here and it's likely to just spend those hooks straight out immediately and just cost you your fish. Naturally on a little tiny jig like that, you can't really add a big hook like that and expect it to be acceptable to the fish. So a hook size needs to complement the jig as much as practically possible. There's not a lot of black and white issues when it comes to fishing. You know, there's an awful lot of gray in between. The bottom line we always say, if there's a fish hanging off your outfit, there's a fish hanging off the hook that you've got on your lure or your jig or even your bait, then you've got to be doing something right. So what we've showed here is not the things that you must do, they're things that we've been doing for a long time and things that you know our, uh, our mentors, if you like, the guys who've showed us a lot about uh, these things over the past decade and a bit have been doing. So we're doing them because they're well proven and that they work. There's other things that do work, of course. So if you've got something that you're doing that's catching fish, fine, it's all good. So next time you're out there throwing a few micro jigs around, in fact, or a few really big ones around, really pay attention to your assist rigs and, and, and not so much how you're putting them on, but what assist rig for what jig and particular times types of action that you're going to look for out there in the water. So all these jigs are just waiting for some water. Find some water, find some fish, away you go. Cheers.